This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to design cover photos for Facebook. And the example I'll be using in this tutorial is sort of like a, uh, a tourism or maybe even a promotional sort of design for the city of New York. I'll just be showing you how to create this particular design here with Inkscape, but this design can be adapted to your own images. So if you have a different theme you'd like to use, you can drag it, you can click and drag your own uh, images into this design. So um, let's get started with that here. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the view is set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one. Then we'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button over here. And we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we want to do is create a rectangle the size of the Facebook cover photo, which for Facebook, their size specification is 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels high. So let's grab the squares and rectangles tool, click and drag and create a rectangle, and just make sure that you have sharp corners over here. You don't want rounded corners like that. Just make sure that button is clicked. If it won't let you click it, that's good. So. Um, We'll go back to the select tool up here and we're going to change the width and the height of this where it says W and H. We're going to change the width to 851. We'll hit 851 and then hit tab on the keyboard to skip over to the height and change that to 315. So 851 by 315 and from this drop down just make sure you have pixels there. And that's the size of a Facebook cover photo. So once we have that, uh, let's just convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And this here is black on my screen, but I'm going to change this to 90% 90, 90 gray, which is the first shade over to the right from the color black. So it's like a very dark gray. So the first thing I want to do now is I'm going to create these little tiles here where these individual images are going to go. So to do that, I'm going to right click on that uh, rectangle and go to duplicate. I'll turn that red and I'll bring the opacity down about in half. And I'm going to change the width of this to 100, so we'll hit 100 and hit enter. And then I'll change the height of it to half the height of this box, which is uh, 315 in half would be 157.5. So I'll change the height of that to 157.5, hit enter. And now that we have this little rectangle here, I'm going to click on this once more to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to grab this top arrow up here. I'm going to hold control and grab this top arrow and just click and drag this to the left one step like that. And then I'll come up here and turn on the snap to cusp nodes and I'll grab this bottom right corner and snap it into the bottom right corner over here. And then I'll duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard. Take that duplicated copy and snap these two corners together right here. And then I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D on the keyboard. I'll make this one blue and I'll just snap this one over here. And then I'll duplicate this one more time, control D and I'll just put this over here. So we now have the four tiles where those images are going to go. The next box I'm going to create is this, uh, like this translucent uh, tile right here and the little white stripe that goes alongside it. So to do that, I'm going to click on this top red one and then hold shift, click on this, the, the blue box beneath it and I'll duplicate them by hitting control D and I'll go to path union and then I'm just going to hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the left, like over here. And I'm going to turn off the snap to cusp nodes. We don't need that right now. And I'm going to take this red box in order to create this little white stripe right here. <clears throat> I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D. Whoops. Uh, hit control D to duplicate it and hold control and just click and drag this off to the right. And I'll bring the opacity of that all the way up. I'll, cr I'll make that white. And then I'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool over here. And I'm going to click and drag over this node, hold Shift, click and drag over that node. And while still holding Shift, grab that node. So we have all of the nodes on the right hand side selected. And with them selected, we could just hold Control and just click and drag one of them all the way over to the left until we get this thin white stripe like that. Maybe a little. That's pretty good right there. And we go back to the Select tool and click off of that to deselect everything. So now that we have the template set, the next step would be to start dro uh, dropping these images into these tiles. So um, 
I'll have links in the description of the video to every single one of the images I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I believe there's four of them in total. Uh, if you'd like to follow along precisely with what I'm doing here, the links will be in the description. So go ahead and download those images and save them somewhere on your computer where you can easily access them. So the first thing, the first image I'm going to use is the background here the, of New York City. So um, I'm going to reduce the size of the Inkscape window so it's about that size. And I'm going to take this uh, image over here, New York City, and just click and drag that into Inkscape. And click OK to embed it maximize the window and by the way if you're using Mac you're not going to be able to click and drag these images into the window but you can do this by going to file and import and once you click on import it'll let you choose where you can import it from so now that we have this I'm just going to take this with this selected I'm going to lower that to the bottom with this button here lower selection to the bottom and I'm going to click on our black rectangle here and bring the opacity of that down maybe not that much maybe about that much is pretty good and then I'll click on the city image over here and I'll hold shift and then click on the, uh, the black rectangle and center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect everything and then click on just the image here and I'm going to hold control and shift and scale this in maybe about that much just so that the edges of the image are a little bit wider than the, uh, image, uh, than the uh, black rectangle here. You don't want this image being smaller than the edges here. You want it a little wider like that. And let me zoom out a little bit. Let me go back to this. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag this up a little bit so that we can see more of the city within this black rectangle and less of the sky. You don't want to position it so you have like nothing but sky and you can't really see much of the city. So I'm going to put this up about that far. That's pretty good. And once we have that set, we can click on the black rectangle and hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. Then hold shift and click on the image and with them both selected we can go to object clip set and we now have that set as the backdrop and now we can click on this black rectangle and we can just adjust the opacity uh, according to how much you of the city image you want of it to show through so I'm gonna leave this right about here that looks pretty good maybe 75 percent maybe a little less and the next step would be I'm gonna click and drag this image of the World Trade Center into these two tiles right here so I'm going to click this blue tile and hold shift and click this blue tile and with them both selected I'll go to path path union and then I'll raise that to the top with this button right here that says raise selection to the top and then again I'm going to minimize the window here and I'm going to grab the image of the World Trade Center and click and drag it into Inkscape click OK to embed it maximize the window and I'll lower this one step so it goes beneath the blue tiles and I'm just going to position this image within the blue tiles. I'll hold control and shift and grab one of these arrows to scale this down. And I'm just going to position this so that we can see the top of the tower and this part of this tower over here within the, uh, the, blue, the blue tiles. Everything within those blue tiles is going to be what shows of this city image. So um, that's one thing to pay attention to. I think that's pretty good just how that is. You can see the top of the tower in this tile and then you can see the remainder of this other tower in this tile so once we've done that I'm just gonna hold shift and click on the blue tiles and with this with them both selected I'll go to object clip set and now I'll bring in the image of the Statue of Liberty so I'll um, reduce this window again click and drag the Statue of Liberty into Inkscape and again if you're using Mac you're not going to be able to uh, click and drag you'll just have to go to file import so um, all right, so let's click on this blue tile over, uh, this red tile, raise that to the top, and just bring this image over here, and just hold Control and Shift and scale it down so it fits nicely in there. Maybe about that size is pretty good. Hold Shift, click on the red tile, go to Object, Clip, Set, and then finally I have this image of the Brooklyn Bridge here. So um, let me once again reduce the size of this window, click and drag the uh, Brooklyn Bridge into there. Click OK to embed it. And I'll just move this off to the left. I'm going to click on this red tile and uh, raise that to the top. I'll just put this over here. Hold Control and Shift to scale it down. Put this right about here. Maybe I'll just make that a little smaller. Uh, make sure to hold Control when you scale whenever you're scaling because if you don't, when you hold Control it locks the proportions like that. If you don't hold Control it's going to distort it and we don't want that so we always hold control when you're scaling 
And that's pretty good like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on the red tile and go to object, clip, set. So we have that side of the image set. The final thing we have to do is make this part here more uh, transparent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this red shape and I'm just gonna bring the opacity down a little more because I wanna be able to see the Empire State Building behind that because I wanna have this red tile positioned right over the Empire State Building so you can see it like that. So I'm just gonna click and drag over the red tile and the white stripe and just hold control and move this off to the right a little bit so that the tower is a little more centered up within that, uh, that red uh, tile right there. And that's a pretty good position as it is. I'll click off of that to deselect everything. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this black rectangle and just move this out of the way a little bit. And I'll take this city image that we're using as the background and I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm gonna lower that one step, lower it again, another step, another step, another step, and one more until it goes beneath the red stripe. And once it's beneath the red stripe, we could hold Shift and click on the red stripe and go to Object, Clip, Set. Now we can click on the red, uh, I mean the uh, black rectangle, then hold shift and click on the city image and just center that back up on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. So what we could do now is we could take this uh, image here, this right here, and I'm just gonna bring the opacity of that down a little bit so that it isn't so harsh with the contrast. Maybe just a slight transparent effect like that. And then if you'll notice here, I have the white stripe going over the edge of this black tile right here. So I'm gonna take this white stripe and I'm gonna raise this to the top with this button up here. And I'm gonna zoom in over this a little bit by pressing plus on the keyboard a few times. And then I'll just hold control and click and drag this over to the left until it goes over the edge of that black line right there. That's pretty good. I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click off it to deselect. And the final step is to put some text going along the edge here. So. Uh, let's grab the text tool, and for this one, I just wrote New York City. Um, I'm just going to hit the caps lock, just write that in. Turn off the caps lock, and I'm going to space these letters out a little bit by coming over here to where it says uh, spacing between letters. I'm just going to raise that. I'm going to press up on that arrow to increase the spacing. I want them to be uh, spaced out pretty far. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down to about that size. And I'll put this on top of the image here, and I'm going to turn that white. And in order to make it go parallel with this line, I'm going to click on the text again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and grab this top right uh, rotation handle on the top. And I'm just going to hold control and just rotate this around until it's aligned with the edge right there. It's running parallel. That's pretty good. I'm going to put that right about there. Then I'll hold shift and click on the black rectangle and just make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect. And let me just zoom in on that a little bit. I'm just gonna hold control and move this to the left a little bit, just to put it a little closer to the edge. That's pretty good. Press one on this keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click off of it to deselect everything. And as you can see, we're now done with our uh, design. We now have this image that we can use as a Facebook cover photo. So if you wanna actually use this as a cover photo, which all you have to do now is click and drag over the whole thing and go to File, Export Bitmap. And if you're using the later version of Inkscape, it's going to say export as PNG. So um, whatever, whatever one that says export, just click on export bitmap. And then you can click on browse and choose wherever it is you want to save it. You can give it a name and then click save. And once you click save, this will close out. And then you could hit export. And then it'll export the graphic to that whatever folder you saved it to. And you will have an 851 by 315 pixels um, image that you can use as a Facebook cover photo. So uh, that pretty much covers it. That's how you can create that with Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.